First, I'm going to sing a kirtan, 108 names, a poem we can sing as a kirtan, 108 names of Sri Gora. It's a Bengali kirtan modeled on the famous, at least in Bengal, famous Sri Krishna Ashto Tarasata Nama, the 108 names of Krishna. So, does everyone have access to that? I'd ask for that to be circulated. Okay. And do you have it in Tamil script? Any others? Telugu also. Did it? Okay, very good. <coughs> So, let it be projected. Let there be light. Let there be projection. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now the scientists say, we can put on the light. We don't need God. And God says, go to hell where it's dark. We don't need you. And Bhaktivikar Swami says, put off your cell phone. You can use it for reading this song. Otherwise, we don't want any sounds from your phone. The great austerity of having to sit through a whole class without hearing that sweet, sweet sound of your phone ringing. What could be a sweeter sound? But if it rings too many times, then you don't like it. Then you think it's too much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Is there a passageway for latecomers to come in? If not, you could make one. Although, actually, don't make it. They should go th at the back. Otherwise, they're going to come and disturb all everyone else. Make the passageway through the back. When the kirtan stops, I guess you can all put your masks over your face. It's pretty difficult to do kirtan with a mask over your face. I never tried it, but it seems like it might be difficult. But we're going to have kirtan now, so you can keep it open. Just to show that we're being good and not get fined by the government or get restricted. If they see we're not following all the rules, then they may... Uh, restrict the number of people allowed to come. Okay, we got it? That's in Tamil. And oh it's both there? Okay. It's pretty small. Got your binoculars? Make it a bit bigger. <coughs> binoculars people bring for Darshan of Radharaman, right? In Rindavan? People bring because the deities are not very big. So People, some people bring binoculars to look and see. You can get very nice darshan like that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh, we only got one side. Okay, we're ready to begin. Now this is the first time I've sung this. And it's the first time that you've sung it. But if you make a mistake, you won't get noticed. If I make a mistake, I'll get noticed. So... Begging forgiveness in advance for any <coughs> slips or slides. For the recording, this is a poem or song in Bengali, Sri Gaura Ashtu Tarashata. Nam, the 108 names of Gaura, modeled on the Sri Krishna Ashtu Tarashata Nam, which is 
famous among Bengali Vaishnavas, the 108 names of Krishna. So, let's sing it. Is that being is that being seen on this on for the broadcast also so that whoever's out there in space cyberspace they can sing along too do we have anyone in the space station watching our broadcast not very likely jaya jaya gaurahari satchirananda shri chaitanya bishambara patita pavan Jaya Jaya Mahaprabhu Gaura Chandra Daya Mai Adham Tarananat Bhakata Ashray Jibe Jibana Gaura Karuna Shagar Jagannatha Mishra Sutta Gauranga Shanda Prema Moe Prema Datta Jagatera Guru Shri Gaura Gopala Dev Bancha Kalpa Toro Nitananda Thakore Mahananda Data Sarva Bhishta Purna Kari Sarva Chitta Gyata Shri Gadadhe, Shri Gadadhare Prana Akile Pati, Lakhi Shabashadhan Agati Ragati. Shri Vishnu Priyar Nata Nitananda Mai Sharba Guna Nidhi Sharba Rashera Alai Jagadananda Priya Navadipa Chandra Adaita Aradha Krishna Purusha Shatantra Bhangshe Balabha Nabhadi Prashunaga Bhuban Vijay Sarva Jan Mugdhaka Rashi Kendra Chura Mani Rashi Kashukam Bhakta Dina Bhakta Priya Sharvananda Dham Shuru Pera Shuka Data Rupera Jiban Shri Sanatan Ernat Nitta Sanatan Shri Jiba Bajshal Prabhu Bhakata Bajshal Bhatko Shair Priya Dubal Erbal
Shri Raghuna Tera Nath Shri Bashera Bash Bhagavan Bhakta Rupa Ananta Prakash Lokanatha Lokashray Bhakata Ranjan Shri Raghunatha Dasa Hridaya Radhan Abhirama Thakore Shokha Sarva Pata Chintamani Chintaniya Hari Namadatta Paramesha Paratpar Dukha Bimochan Jagai Madhai Adi Papi Udharan Rasa Raja Murti Ramananda Bimohan Sarva Bhoma Pandita Garba Binashan Amoghera Pranadatta Durjandalan Purna Kama Nimaratma Lajani Baran Paramatma Saratsa Vaishnav Jibhan Shukadatta Tsukamoy Bhuvana Bhavan Vishwarupa Vishwanath Vishwabhimohan Shri Gaura Gaubinda Bhakta Chita Suranja Nayanera Abhiram Bhavukraman Bhakta Chitta Chaura Bhakta Chitta Binodan Nadiya Bihari Hari Ramani Mohan Dvija Kula Chandra Dvija Kula Pujatam Shukabhi Shriniti Dhaka Nayana Ranjan Bare Kama Hride Deha Shri Charan Bhabhukshanya Shishabha Jiba Vishtaraka Bhabuk Janara Shukha Dhatha Shunayaka Prataparudera Prataparudera Abhilash Purnakari Sharupadi Bhakate Shuddha Agyakari Sharba Abhatar Shah Karunanidhan Paramudha Prataparudera 
Prabhu Mori Karutran. Ananta Prabhurnam Ananta Mahima Ananta Dide Bejare Dite Nare Shima Gaurangera Madhurnam Karamana Shah Jahabina Kali Juge Gati Nahi Jai Nam Shai Gaura Janahi Nishchai Name Shahit Prabhu Shatata Achai Gauranam Harinam Ekoi Jai Koi Bhagavata Bhakya Ekobhu Mithyanoi Karo Karo Areman Nama Shankitan Papa tapa dure jabe pabe premadhan Gaura nam Krishna nam Atishu madhur Shada ashadaye jay Shai shab chatur Shiba DJ Nam Shada Koregan Shena me bonchito hoile kise hobe tran A Shota Ashta Nam J Kore Parton Anaya she pai she Chaitanya charan Shata ashta nam je kare ye shaban Ta prati tushta shada shachirananda Shri Janaba Ramapada Kariya Sharan Shatta Ashta Nam Gai Esha Chinanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Sorry about you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. There's one volume of Chaitanya Charitamrita, and the bring it, bring it. Hare Hare Jaya Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pari Raja Gat Hare Ashtu Tarasata Sri Srimad AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupad Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pari Raja Gat Hare Ashtu Tarasata Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupad Ki Jai Nama Charya Srila Haridash Thakur Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinde Ki Jai Prem Seika Ho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhara Srivasa Adhigaur Bhakta Rinde Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Goshyama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Gopa Dham Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navarit Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Tulasi Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Gaura Purnima, Sri Gaura Jayanti, Sri Gaura Avibhava Titi Mahamahotsav Ki Jai, Gaura Premanande Haribo, all glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna, all glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Itiname. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharne Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschapta Desha Tarne Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Translators especially, please take note. If you were not already informed, I'm going to be reading from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita of Krishadas Kaviraj Goswami, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Antyalila, Chapter 2, beginning from text 102. Antyalila, 
chapter 2, beginning from texts 102. I may not read... Uh, I'm just going to read the verses translation without reading the Bengali because of time constraints. And they're not much purports, but I'm largely going to leave out the purports also. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to read from my own expanded commentary on Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's an ongoing work in progress. I don't know if I'll ever finish it in this lifetime. I'm looking for the English editor to drop down from Vaikuntha. I don't speak English in Vaikuntha. Anyway, from England or America or somewhere who can help me to sort out all this stuff. So many books to write. Mm. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrestam Manumapi Shachi Putra Matra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagraja Murupuring Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam I'm a fool. Now you know it. Hare Krishna. Uh, no, actually it's from verse 101. Uh, I'll begin reading. And I don't know if I'll... I, we don't have so much time. And I'm, if I don't finish it today, then I'll plan on finishing it tomorrow, because tomorrow's actually a two-day festival, right? The, the festival of Jagannath Mishra is tomorrow. We don't generally celebrate it much, but it is also a festival. Actually, in, in Navadip, Nadia, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born, on that day they didn't celebrate, because he didn't get born till the evening, and the celebration started in the evening, the crackers went off and everything. I guess they had crackers. It's also described in Chaitanya Bhagavad, that the wedding of Vishnu Priya and, and uh, Nimai. The crackers were going off. So it's, it's okay. You can let off crackers. Unholy. Here down in South India, they don't throw all colors, do they? Do they do that here? No. They're a little safer here from, from all the colors, if you don't like to be covered with colors. Uh, yeah, so I may continue tomorrow. Now, this is a commentary in progress. It's not being done systematically. Um, so, it's not in... Anyway, it's just on the way. All right, so text 101. One day Bhagavan Acharya... In, and if you haven't read Chaitanya Charitamrita, you're going to be lost probably on some of the things because you have to know the names and the feelings and the devotees. You have to read again and again and then we get some idea of what's going on. <clears throat> okay, one day Bhagavan Acharya invited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dine at his home. This is in Puri. The Antyalila is in Puri. And there's a reason why it's divided from the Madhilila, a lot of which is also in Puri. That's, that can be understood from the first chapter of the Antilila, why this divide comes, which I've written on extensively, but I decided to speak on this today instead. 
Actually, I asked Shama Krishna because he's writing, he's typing in all these things. So he suggested to do this section. Uh, so who's Bhagavan Acharya? Kanja Bhagavan Acharya. Uh, he invited Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dine at his home. Thus, he was preparing rice and various types of vegetables. So, the commentary which I've written so far on this is now begins a new narration, that of the chastisement of Chota Haridas. The, the title given for this chapter in Srila Prabhupada's edition is The Chastisement of Junior Haridas. Next begins a new narration, that of the chastisement of Chota Haridas, whose name appears in the next verse. Otherwise, he, was, he is scantily mentioned in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. His name is mentioned prior to this, but not much. And would, would not have been very well known were it not for the seemingly unfortunate episode that will now be narrated. Not very well known. He was very well known to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was. He would be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu every day. He would, apart from Kirtan, he, he is. Well, that will be narrated. He had other services also. Choto Junior Haridas <coughs> is thus named to differentiate him from Boro Senior Haridas. Both were Kirtaniyas in the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I didn't mention here, there's also the most famous of the three prominent Haridasas in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's service. There may have been many more also. Is the most famous is Thakur Haridas. There's Bora Haridas and Chota Haridas. Bora is probably by age. That's the system in Indian culture up to the present time, right? You have the first Amaboro Dada means the eldest, and then you have the Mej Dada, the one in between. And, and if you're, anyway, they say senior and junior and all this thing, according to age. Uh, just to give an outline of the story, Haridas, uh, he committed. Some minor offense, which Chaitanya, it, it might not have even seemed to be an offense. That he went, he was asked to go to beg rice. And he saw a young woman at the place and he looked at her with some desire. That's all could happen. If we admit it, probably it happens to us also, because in this material world, it what's, it's what makes the whole material world run on. But those who take to the renounced life, they avoid the hridya granti. They don't get involved. So there may be some passing attraction. Even the Yamuna Acharya, Prabhupada quotes him as Yamuna Acharya saying that whenever he sees a beautiful woman and the thought of sex enjoyment comes to his mind, Bhavati, what is that? Bhavati Shrishta. Vikara, Nishtivanancha. Bhavati Mukha Vikara, Nishtivanancha. Then my, my lips curl with distaste and I spit at the thought. So Srila Prabhupada commented that even in the mind of an, a renunciant, that thought may come, but his response is that he rejects that thought. So it seemed like a very small offense, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu banned. Haridas from his association. He can't come to see me. So that's the story as it unfolds. That's the basic story. And the end, you'll get to hear it if we get that far. So this is a new narration. And this, this is beginning from 
101, verse 101. Prior to this, in this chapter, is the narration of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not going to Bengal, going to Bengal and not going. Those who have read and remember can understand what I'm talking about. And there's also a little bit about Bhagavan Acharya's brother who came to visit Bhagavan Acharya because Bhagavan Acharya is from Bengal. So he came and at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's indication, the brother Gopal was sent away by Bhagavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like his brother because his brother was a Mayavadi. And now this narration begins. So, text 102. A devotee named Chota Haridas used to sing for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was well known for doing that. Although he did other services also, but he was best known for singing. He was known as a Kirtaniya. Bhagavan, yeah, the very word is used here, Prabhur Kirtaniya. It wasn't that he was just singing here and there, but particularly for the pleasure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would sing. He was w one of the inner circle. He, that means he knew what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liked to He sung in a way that was pleasing. Gora Bihita Kirtan, the kind of Kirtan that's very pleasing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> so, a devotee named Chodhari Das used to sing for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhagavan Acharya called him to his home and spoke as follows. Please go to the sister of Shiki Mahiti. Notice the name is not given. The name is Madhavi Devi, which will be, a, which will be given in the next verse. But notice that they don't say the name just like we find here in Chaitanya Charitamrita. The wife of Parameshwara Modak is referred to as Mukunda Armata, the mother of Mukunda, her eldest son. So it appears that it's Madhavi Devi, the sister of Shiki Mahiti, was, uh, she'd never married or she had, or maybe she had no children or whatever. She might have been an early Widow. It's all. There's no. It's not known. Maybe if we look at the Oriya records, we may find because she was from Shiki Mahiti is from Orissa. Many devotees living with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were from Bengal, like Bhagavan Acharya. But uh, many were from Puri also. So she may have been an early widow, or maybe she never married. But she's known as. Uh, Mahitir Bhagini, the sister of Shiki Mahiti. The name is not given. It, it's not spoken. So Bhagavan Acharya said to Chota Haridas, In my name, ask her for a man of white rice and bring it here. A man is about 40, oh, it says here almost two pounds. That seems too much. There are two, there are two mans. Oh, no, it's a mon, sorry. Man is, man is like a kilo and Mun is 40 kilos. So, in my commentary, I'm just expanding a little bit, I write that respecting Chota Haridasi's role as a personal servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, devotees would generally not ask him to do anything for themselves. His duty was to be at the beck and call of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu under the guidance of Govinda 24 hours daily. Actually, he, he, it wasn't exactly that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would, would tell him to do this and that. He was Govinda, the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, had a team with him to assist him in, in his service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, among whom were... Uh, Ramai, Ramai, I saw. Nandai, Ramai, Nandai, there were two, and there were others. So Chota Haridas was one of them because they had, there were so many things they had to do for Chaitanya. I've discussed this elsewhere in my commentary. So, 
devotees wouldn't call Chota Haridas to do something for themselves because they knew that he was he might not be doing anything at that particular time. If they're not doing anything, they'll be chanting japa, and not that they're wasting their time. But uh, at any time he may be needed for some service may come up. Go here, do there, do this, do that. All kinds of things can happen. Some some birds have made a hole in the wall and someone has to make their passing stool. You don't know. All kinds of things can happen. So there was a team with Go, under the guidance of Govinda. So Bhagavan Acharya took the liberty to call Chota Haridas considering that the rice to be begged was for offering to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Having heard that Madhavi Devi had first class rice, because if you're going to invite Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you're going to say, well, I better get the best rice. And I heard that the best rice is with Madhavi. She's got the best rice, so let's get some of that. For himself he didn't want, but for Mahaprabhu. Uh, so first class rice, Bhagavan Acharya wanted some to cook for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Generally, it is understood that Madhavi Devi resided in Benpur, which is also the place of Rai Ramananda. Benpur, about 17 kilometers southwest of Puri, near to Al Alananath. Now, Bhagavan Acharya, he was lame. Kanja. It's, it's stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He was lame and... He was unable to go personally, and probably he was busy anyway. That stated, he was busy arranging all the cooking, the veg. He has so many things to do, to arrange for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come to his home. Uh, <coughs> uh, being lame and unable to go personally, Bhagavan Acharya requested Chota Haridas to go and beg some rice on his behalf. As a Brahmana, Bhagavan Acharya, because by the name Acharya, we can understand he's a Brahmana, by caste. As a Brahmana, Bhagavan Acharya had the prerogative to beg from others. It was quite appropriate that Bhagavan Acharya sent Chota Haridas who as a member of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's immediate circle of assistants, was accustomed to running such errands as and when the need arose. Of course, he'd have to take permission from Govinda and inform him he's going, not that Govinda's going to say, no, where's my pen? Okay, I got one. Oh, it's there, okay. Just make a note of that. Okay, then read a few verses. Uh, Shiki Mahiti's sister was named Madhavi Devi. She was an elderly lady who always performed austerities. She was very advanced in devotional service. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted her as formerly being an associate of Srimati Radharani. In the entire world, three and a half people were his intimate devotees. The three were Swarup Damodar Goswami, Ramananda Rai, and Shiki Mahiti, and the half a person was Shiki Mahiti's sister. So we don't hear much about Shiki Mahiti. But he's on the level of Srub Damada and Ramananda Rai. Who, and his sister also is on the same level. He's given half, I've discussed that elsewhere. Why is half a person? Not that women are less in devotion, but that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being a sannyasi, wouldn't have so much opportunity to mix with her. She was living at some distance from Puri also. So she wouldn't come so much. So intimacy is not necessarily based on proximity because she may not have seen much. So after begging the rice from her, 
Junior Haridas brought it to Bhagavan Acharya, who is very pleased to see its quality. In great affection, Bhagavan Acharya cooked varieties of vegetables and other preparations dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He also obtained remnants of food from Lord Jagannath and digestive aids such as ground ginger and also lime with salt. Everything nice so far. The plot is about to change. We may, we may wonder why there's such... It's, it's very sad, this narration. But it's very instructive also. Chaitanya Charitamrita means it's all nectar. But some of the nectar, it's... Uh, just like you have katamrita. Sour and sweet. So this is uh, this is like bitter and sweet at the same time. Okay, so going on with the narration, and remember, just we're just getting a, a, a synopsis. At noon, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to eat the offerings of Bhagwan Acharya. It's just a synopsis. We don't have how how he came and Bhagwan Acharya washed his feet and the, how they cleaned everything and. Uh, it's a ho so many things. How the, the conversation between them, uh, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took, and he was very pleased with the, with the, cooking and the reception. We don't hear all of that because otherwise, one chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita would expand into the whole book size. So it's just it's just a little drop. <coughs> the uh, Krishna Kaviraj writes that. Every moment when he was performing his pastimes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every moment could be described in thousands of books. There's no end. It's, it's unlimited, even one moment of his pastimes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first appreciated the fine rice of all the preparations. He first appreciated very, very good rice, something very special rice. And therefore questioned him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, the Lord asked, where did you get such fine rice? He knows everything already. He's asking. Bhagavan Acharya replied, I got it by begging from Madhavi Devi. Here the word Madhavi is used exactly. Maybe it's different who you're speaking to. Or maybe Bhagavan Acharya forgot because he's... That's just described in the section before. Bhagavan Acharya got chastised in this by Swarup Damodar for being too liberal. <laughs> uh, so he may not remember all these things all the time. So going on, text 111. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked who had begged the rice and brought it back, Bhagavan Acharya mentioned the name of Junior Haridas. Praising the quality of the rice, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu partook of the prasad. Then after returning to his residence, he gave the following order to Govinda, his personal assistant. Here it's not mentioned Govinda, his personal assistant, but Srila Prabhupada adds that just in case we haven't been paying attention and we, we forgot. Because Govinda, almost from the beginning of the Madhya Leela, he's, he's there all the time. You don't hear that much about him because he's quietly in the background. But from time to time you hear about him. He'll be mentioned more later in this um, chapter also. So uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Govinda under whose tutelage Chota Haridas was serving, he told him, from this day forward do not allow Chota Haridas to come here. And I've put in my 
commentary. Here, a quote from Srila Prabhupada. In one of his talks, Srila Prabhupada said, Chota Haridas, Junior Haridas, he was a very nice singer. So he was singing in the assembly of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> one day he went to beg some rice from Shiki Mahiti's sister. And there was a young woman and he lustfully saw her. That is sometimes natural. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood that just to teach us. While he was eating, he said, Who brought this rice? Chota Haridas. So ask him not to see me anymore. Finished. Everyone was surprised. What happened? Then by inquiry it was found that he lustfully saw one young woman. And somewhere else in the commentary, yeah. And I, I've written, this was actually, we may say, well, how does Prabhupada know that there was a young woman? It's not mentioned in the text. Um, but actually, Bhaktisiddhan Sarsar Thakur, he revealed this. And again, it might be in some other work that I'm not aware of. Um, there, there are Oriya writings about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which are, I don't think any of them have been translated into English. I don't know Oriya, even to read it. So, uh, Bhaktisthan Sahasar Thakur, by his divine vision, that is, Shat Shiksha Pradarshini, I believe that was in Dhaka, he revealed that Madhavi Devi had a young maidservant in her home upon whom Chota Haridas had looked with carnal desire, which was tantamount to speaking intimately with her. It's not say that he spoke with her, but that was equivalent to that. So some other quotes. Uh, one <clears throat> god brother of mine recalled Srila Prabhupada an incident regarding Srila Prabhupada. He said, a person, I presume that was a devotee, a person was disturbed that Chota, oh, well, then we, we uh, jump forward ahead, that Chota Haridas, Chota Haridas being rejected by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, eventually committed suicide. So Bhagavadas asked, a person was disturbed that Chota Haridas had committed suicide for seemingly such a small offense, Lord Chaitanya chastised him so heavily. So Prabhupada explained, Junior Haridas went back to Godhead. Just because the father chastises the son, it does not mean that he does not let him back into the house. And then, another quote from Srila Prabhupada in a conversation on this topic. Srila Prabhupada said, just like a person playing in the theatrical stage, he commits suicide, but next moment he goes home. On the stage, you may see, watching a drama, someone commits suicide. But then the person in the drama, after the play is over, he just changes his clothes and goes home. Life goes on as usual. So Srila Prabhupada said, so when Krishna comes along with his associates to preach something, they play like ordinary men, but they're not ordinary men. This, is a, this section is very instructive, this whole section, the story of Haridas, Chota Haridas. When, uh, when Vishnu Jan one of Srila Prabhupada's sannyasi disciples, asked Srila Prabhupada, how was Chota Haridas delivered by committing suicide after his offense? Srila Prabhupada said something to the effect that if a sannyasi has illicit sex, then it is better that he kill himself. That we find Atta Vishayinam Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that for someone who is supposed to be Niskinchen, who is supposed to have 
renounce the world, then if he associates with a materialist or a woman, it's worse than drinking poison. So Srila Prabhupada said, if a sannyasi has illicit sex, then it is better that he kill himself. But that is an exemplary punishment. It is not meant to be taken literally. So it's stated, Prabhupada said, but you're not supposed to literally do it. That's another whole story about Vishnu Jan. So in my commentary, I write, there are all kinds of possibilities as to what could have happened. Because we don't know the details exactly. You know, maybe she, we don't know. Maybe she looked at him first, or it, you just don't know what was going on. It, it, uh, <clears throat> I wrote this something which is defunct now. Uh, many widows reside in ashrams even today and live austerely, dedicating themselves to religious practices. But some widows are young and attractive. Not all widows are older women. They can, they, they can be widowed at the age of eight and live as a widow for their whole life. So they go through a phase. And not all the widows are satiated in their lusty desires. Widow scandals are a blight on the social history of India. Furthermore, widows are enjoined to wear just one simple cloth that is hardly sufficient to cover them, including the upper part of their torso. Thus it can happen that inadvertently their breast region becomes partially exposed, which can be a great provocation for any man, as Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu himself admitted, which we'll find in the just upcoming verses. And I've seen it many times in Bengal because the widows, they just have one cloth to cover and sometimes it just falls down or doesn't cover them properly. And, and not all the widows are all women. Probably still now, they, 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 I'm talking about what, 40 years ago or something now, the widows all wear fancy clothes and they keep their bangles and then it's so nonsense. In Nepal, the widows, they still, they wear uh, white cloths. You don't know. You haven't lived there for a long time. You wouldn't know the difference, who's a widow and who's not, because they dress the same. Here, they're, they're supposed to take off their tali and everything. I guess they take that off. That might be the only difference. Okay, so reading on, not okay, but not very okay. It's a sad, sad story. When Junior Haridas heard that he had been ordered not to approach Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very unhappy. Of course, he was very unhappy. No one could understand why he had been ordered not to come. At this point, now we know because we're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it, all of a sudden, Chaitanya, he was doing his service as usual, day in, day out. He'd been doing for years. He'd just gone, it's, it's quite a long walk from Puri to Benpur and back. It's, it's quite an austere thing to do. Would have taken him if he left early morning, he'd be back by the evening, walking quickly. So it's it's quite quite a big. Uh, you'd be walking all day. You wouldn't have much time to stop there. We don't know exactly all the details. He might have stopped overnight, and maybe in Alalanath or somewhere. The, the, the temple is there, Alvanath. We don't know exactly, but he just, all of a sudden the order comes, not allowed to come, finished. And why? Why? What happened? They may have asked Haridas also, what happened? I don't, I don't know. What happened? 
He, could, he couldn't understand. Haridas fasted continuously for three days. This could be taken as a protest, but it's not like that. It's just like when you feel so, so disturbed about something, you just don't want to eat or sleep. It's not that he was trying to make a point to Chaitanya Mahabha, just he. Then Sarup Damada, Goswami and other confidential devotees approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to inquire from him. It's a similar scenario to when Maharaj Prataparudra was not allowed to come to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the devotees headed by Sarup Damada, they intervened and they gradually wore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They gradually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted to see him. Prataparudra hadn't made any offense. The only offense he made was being born as a king. <laughs> or being born in a situation where he became the king. So it wasn't an offense. Exactly. But it's a similar situation. Someone's not allowed to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The devotees come and they try to soften him up a bit. But they just approach to inquire. What great offense has Junior Haridas committed? Why has he been forbidden to come to your door? The word is used, dwaramana. Dwaramana. It literally means forbidden from the door. It's a way of saying, it's a way saying that you're not allowed into the presence, not allowed to come. He has now been fasting for three days, they told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, he's the super soul in everyone's heart. He knows what's going on, but he wouldn't have guessed that Haridas was having a party and eating lots of pakoras or something like that. He, he, he could understand. He can understand Haridas is upset. And he, it's a punishment. Punishment is meant to make people unhappy. The Lord replied, What verse is this? 117, yeah. The Lord replied, I cannot tolerate seeing the face of a person who has accepted the renounced order of life, but who still talks intimately with a woman. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, Srila Bhaktisthan says her taco comments that sharalata, or simplicity, is the first qualification of a Vaishnava. So I've just commented on this point. The fact that a Vaishnava is simple does not mean that he cannot be sophisticated either in behavior, lifestyle, or intellectualism, as indeed was Bhaktisiddhan Sasar Thakur, the author of this comment. So Bhaktisiddhan Sasar Thakur is saying that simplicity is the first qualification of a Vaishnava, but Bhaktisiddhan Sasar Thakur he was very sophisticated in his behavior, his language, the way he lived. He would go in cars, which was unusual for anyone at that time in India, and uh, unthinkable for sannyasis. And he so, Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur went. What does it mean by simplicity? Then I've commented here. A Vaishnava's simplicity is his one-pointedness in serving Krishna and concomitantly his absence of desire for anything even slightly outside the scope of service to Krishna. Then, uh, further comment on this verse. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's response seemed disproportionate. Now, everyone is learning here for the first time about what Haridas did wrong. And Haridas himself might not have been even conscious of why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was rejecting him. Yeah, you see some, I, we don't know exactly what happened, but you, you see some woman and there's some thought comes in the mind and then you just, it, it's here and gone. 
maybe the uh, Madhavi Devi, we don't know exactly. The Madhavi Devi may have had that maidservant come to bring the rice to deliver, to, to give it. Someone had to give it to Haridas. And he may have said thank you or something, spoke with her. We don't know exactly what happened. Haridas had passed many years in close association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, fa faithfully serving and please, serving him and pleasing him by singing kirtan. He did all kinds of menial services and he did kirtan. Certainly there must have been much mutual affection between them. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loves his devotees and they love him. Yet now Haridas was being dismissed for a seemingly slight discrepancy for which he had exhibited appropriate remorse. And he got the chastisement that you don't come. And then he was fasting. and ups It wasn't that he said, well, he doesn't care for me. Okay, I don't care for him. That's more like Jagadananda style, something. <laughs> Here's another, another one who fasted. Being upset. Well, he was upset with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but that's a different. Now, on this point yeah, of Sharalata, the opposite of Sharalata, simplicity is duplicity. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying that this, this Haridas, he's supposed to be a renunciant, but he's still interested in women. That's duplicitous. So elsewhere, Srila Prabhupada writes, the material world is so made that unless one becomes a clever diplomat, his life will be a failure. So there you go. Career advice. It's very popular in ISKCON nowadays, right? Give career advice, personality development. But the actual fact is, if you want to get ahead in the world, you have to be a rascal. If you... You don't become the President of the United States by being a nice guy. You might show yourself in public as being a nice guy, but you've got to be a nasty guy to get there and even to keep the job. Okay, let's go on. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, so strongly do the senses adhere to their objects of enjoyment that indeed a wooden statue of a woman attracts even the mind of a great saintly person. Then you may say that, well, why is Haridas to be blamed? I'll make a note. I didn't think of that before. It may attract even the mind of a great saintly person. Dharavi Prakriti. Oh, I always say that. I learned it as Daru Prakriti. Dharavi Prakriti Hare Muner Apiman. And then Srila uh, Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami quotes from Manu Sanghita and Bhagavatam. The same verse appears in both places. Actually, there's a lot of uh, many verses in Manu which are also in Bhagavatam. So this is one of them. Matra Swasra Duhitra Va Navivikta Sano Bhavet Balavan Indriya Gramo Vidvang Samapi Karshati. One should not sit one should not sit closely with one's with man, with one's mother, sister, or daughter. For the senses are so strong that they may attract even a person advanced in knowledge. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continues, there are many persons with little in their possession who accept the renounced order of life like monkeys. They go here and there engaging in sense gratification and speaking intimately with women. 
After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered his room. Seeing him in such an angry mood, all the devotees fell silent. The next day, all the devotees together approached the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to submit an appeal on behalf of Junior Haridas. Haridas has committed a small offense, they said. Therefore, O Lord, please be merciful to him. Now he has received a sufficient lesson. In the future, he will not commit such an offense. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My mind is not under my control. What does that mean? That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also looking at women? No, it's in a different way. It does not like to see anyone in the renounced order who talks intimately with women. You should all tend to your respective engagements. Give up this useless talk. If you speak it this way again, I shall go away and you will no longer see me here. Thought we were going to have a blissful Gaur Purnima narration. It's not so blissful. It is and it isn't. We're not hearing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing in ecstasy. There's also one side of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Hearing this, all the devotees covered their ears with their hands, got up and went about their respective duties. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also left that place to perform his noon duties. No one could understand his pastimes. The next day, all the devotees went to Sri Paramananda Puri and requested him to pacify the Lord. Sarup Damada was the leader of all the devotees under Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why that is so, I've discussed elaborately elsewhere in my commentary. It all goes back to Vrindavan 4,500 years before. <clears throat> so generally, Surup Damoda, if there's a, this I've also discussed in this commentary elsewhere, if there's something to be said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Surup Damada will say, or maybe Nityananda will say, but Surup Damada is much more level headed than Nityananda because Nityananda is Sahaja Pagal. It's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. By nature, he's mad. The Surup Damada is very calm and composed. If Surup Damada, it's unusual that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu won't listen to Surup Damada, then if Sri Damada Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't, then what do you do next? Then you ask Paramananda Puri, because Paramananda Puri is senior to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the sense that Paramananda Puri is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So he's on the level of his own, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's guru. So Paramananda Puri was respected by everyone, but it appears that he including Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it appears he was somewhat mild person and he, he wouldn't... He's there in the pastimes, but uh, he's somewhat mild and he doesn't get involved with instructing or chastising. And Sri Damada chastises a lot. He already chastised Bhagavan Acharya in this chapter. And he's, a, he's heavy. And there's a reason for that also. Go back to Vrindavan, 4,500 years ago. Then you'll find out why. So, uh, they went to Paramananda Puri. It's, it's the last resort. Surely Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will listen to Paramananda Puri, what Paramananda Puri says, because he, he respects Paramananda Puri. He respects Sarup Damada, but it's different. Sarup Damada is a servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's so close to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're, they're almost on the same level. Hmm. He's the uh, Dvitiya Swarup, it's described in Chaitanya. He's the second form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhur Avishtata Baka Kaimon. 
He's completely absorbed. His whole being, Srub Damodar, is absorbed in the... It, it, his his body, minds, and words is completely absorbed in the being of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that's another big discussion in the commentary. But so anyway, the, the devotees asked Paramananda Puri, and Paramananda Puri therefore went alone to the residence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord, after offering him obeisances, seated him by his side with great respect. The Lord inquired. What is your order? That's when you go in the presence of a senior person. Or if a senior person, if you see, then what do you say? Is Agye in Bengal, in the culture. I, the culture's changed now in the last 40 years. It's just like I, I, when I was temple president in Dhaka, I might call someone, some junior department, and they'd reply, Agye, what is your order? So same thing here. Kiyagya. Kiyagya. Puchila. Kiyagya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, what is your order? For what purpose have you come here? So it seems that Paramananda, to come at an unusual time, there must, or he could, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand there's some particular purpose. Paramananda Puri then submitted his prayer that the Lord show favor to Junior Haridas. Hearing this request, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, My dear Lord, please hear me. It is better for you to stay here with all the Vaishnavas. Please give me permission to go to Alalanas. I shall remain there alone. Only Govinda will go with me. So I've written a lot on this one. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu threatened to go to Alalanath, but if he was to leave Puri, then why not he go to Vrindavan or anywhere else? Right? Why Alana? If you're going to leave, then you go to Puri. You'd go to uh, Vrindavan, right? The reason is that he, has given, he had given his word to his mother that he would remain in Puri, and Alalanath was within Sri Ketra Mandal, within the area. It's all Puri, that uh, it's called Shankar Ketra. It's shaped like a conch. The whole area, beginning with Bhuvaneshwar, covering Konark, Puri, Alalanath, it's all part of the area, which is Puri. It's like we have, you have uh, Delhi, and then you have the, what is that, the greater na capital, What's that called? Greater Capital Region? National Capital Region, NCR. So that includes Faridabad, which is in Haryana, and Noida, which is in UP, and Ghaziabad, which is in UP, and Gurugram, which is in Haryana. So it's all part of the National Capital Region. It's different, but it's included still. <clears throat> So Alalanath was, 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 was within Sri Ketra Mandal, so technically he would still be in Puri. At Alalanath, he could continue to have regular darshan of Vishnu in the ancient temple there. Of course, had he actually left for, for Alalanath, no doubt his devotees in Puri would follow him, just as the residents of Ayodhya wanted to follow Bhagavan Ramchandra to the forest. He was banned to the forest, and then the people said, okay, we're all going to the forest too. Kaikei can have an empty Ayodhya, and we'll be with Ram in the forest. So why didn't they go? Why didn't they all go with it? And Ram forbid them, no, you stay here. And still they came, later, with Barak. Anyway, we're on Gorlila now. None of this happened. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's threat to go to Alalanath was largely rhetorical. His way of establishing a principle that was inviolable and not up for discussion. In other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that if he said, that if you ask me again, I'll, go to, I'll, I'll leave Puri, then that he knew that the devotees would say, okay, we're going to ask you again, and then you go. He knew they wouldn't do that. It's his way of enforcing 
the principle and, and establishing a principle. It's not up for discussion. Moreover, threatening to leave Puri and to reside alone in Alalanath. Oh, this isn't a... Yeah. He, he enforced his desire upon his devotees. He did so again later. That's in chapter 9. What's all that about? I just... Do, 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 do. Oh, it may not come here. He did so again later. And he did so earlier with Prataparudra. Well, oh, he did so later with Gopinath Patana. Patanayaka, when they're all devotees were saying, hey, save him, save him, they're going to kill him. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, just leave me alone. You keep on harassing me, I'll leave and go to, to Alalanath. They're going to kill him. Okay. <laughs> Generally, the Lord was submissive to their wishes. So why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu... The, all the devotees are requesting him to forgive Chota, Chota Haridas. Why is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being so harsh? Chaitanya, and then I've written here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uncompromising in upholding dharmic principles, even if by doing so he apparently caused distress to his followers, to his devotees. Actually, he did cause distress. In this way, the, why was he causing distress to his devotees? And not saying, okay, it's only a small offense. Forgive him, he won't do it again. Why? He did this to protect his devotees, both at that time and in the future, by demonstrating how, well, there, there are different principles. This will be discussed by Bhaktis Dansasar Thakur at the end of this chapter. One thing is to demonstrate the principle that an acharya cannot allow the devotees to become loose. If he allows looseness, then the whole thing will tumble down. And if he allows, in the name of renunciation, that sannyasis, Chartaharidas, there's no record of him officially taking sannyas, but he was. He, had, he was known, he'd renounced the world. So if they laugh and joke with women, then the whole sampradaya will fall down. It'll come to worse than that. Now, so that's one reason. But another reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so strict about this, an acharya must not allow the natural affection of his followers to drag him into social impropriety. This is a very important point that the, the the acharya has to set the standards. His followers, his disciples, they may say, "Well, you know, you don't need to be so strict. You can have women massage you or something." <laughs> they say, "It is very good. She's very good at massage and." You can have, it's all right. Or you can have a woman secretary who you travel with here and there. It's all right because, you know, she's a nice devotee. You can say like that. But it, it compromises the principle. And therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wanted to establish this principle to protect his devotees now, at, at that time and in the future, and to protect the whole sampradaya. And to do it, he to <laughs> from this incident, we can understand that in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, among his devotees, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he needed an opportunity to demonstrate how his devotees, his renunciant devotees, shouldn't mix with women, how they should be very strict in this regard. He wanted to demonstrate it, but there was no... How could he do it? Because they weren't doing this wrong thing. So when there was a tiny little thing, which was not even actually an offense, but it was something which might be slightly construed as an offense, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took advantage. Okay, I have to show this. I have to make a big fuss 
I had to be absolutely strict to demonstrate this principle. But who are you going to demonstrate it with? Because there's no one who's doing anything wrong in that way. So he got something which was slightly like something wrong. Otherwise, how is he going to do it? You making a note of that, Chitta Hari? Okay, send it to me by email, because I didn't write it down in my notes yet. Elaborating on this. Or maybe I did, I can't remember. Not everything's in here. This threat also demonstrated Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's demonstration of the ideal of a sannyasi to not be dependent upon others. He can live alone if required, even without other renunciants among his disciples. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also showed how a sannyasi must uphold that principles are more important than his personal preferences or conveniences. So it may be that a sannyasi is being very nicely served by his disciples and they give a nice room and nice prasad and make all arrangements and everything very nicely. And the sannyasi, one of them may, one of them who's making these arrangements, and actually Chota Haridas was helping with all these arrangements, that one of them may do something very wrong. Chota Haridas didn't do anything very wrong, but he did something which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is construing as being very wrong. So they may do something very wrong, and you may forgive him in the name of mercy, but actually you're thinking, well, if he doesn't, if I throw him out, actually he should be thrown out, but I, if I throw him out, then how am I going to get my three meals a day? I, he, he's donating so much money. How will I get the money if I'm so hard with him? So this kind of thought, the tricky mind, may come also. Not in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not in Prabhupada. Even Prabhupada can take money from anyone and purify it, but that's not true of everyone. So this is the kind of thing. Therefore, Bhaktisthan Sasar Thakur warned against initiating people just because they're rich and can give lots of money, and then you become their servant. There's a show going on of being the guru and the disciple, but what's actually going on is that the guru is careful to satisfy the disciple because the disciple is offering him money and physical comforts. So it becomes a mutual cheating relationship. The guru must be able to say to the disciple, this is wrong. If he's not able to do that because he thinks, well, what will happen if he stops giving money? Or who is going to cook such nice meals for me? Then the whole thing becomes rotten. And it's not guru-disciple relationship. It's, it's just a sham. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing this also. He was ready just to leave and go to Alalanath. But, he said, I would take Govinda with me only. Which attests to Govinda's special position. You keep one assistant. One assistant, Govinda served with a whole team to assist him. But he'd take Govinda only. Just one servant. So, in this way, he admitted he's independent. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is independent. He's showing now, he's showing his independence as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But even he's independent from his devotees, which is really unusual. Because he's depend but in, in terms of establishing the principle, he wants to show his independence, but even then he would take Govinda. And shows how much he trusts Govinda, that Govinda won't fall like that as Kala Krishna does did in South India. Make a note of that. Govinda, we, he's not expected to, to fall, or Govinda's not expected to...
Govinda has a relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's serving him intimately, and he's he's he knows everything about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he's very reserved at the same time. He doesn't become very familiar. He always keeps an attitude of awe and reverence, despite being so intimate in many ways. He sees everything, he knows everything. He doesn't say to others. His mood is one of service, as will be found out later in this Antilila, which is really very, very sweet. Antilila, more. It gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter, and then it gets too much, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu leaves. It gets too much for everyone. It's just too, too intense. Hmm. We use words in the language, which the language is, mm, we say things, but when we say too intense, what does that mean? It's, it's, it has to be understood from transcendental viewpoint. That's why Chaitanya Charitamrita is very high. It's, I, I see so many devotees falling asleep. It may be one reason is they've been working so hard to prepare the, the new temporary temple. We're going f this is the last talk, which will be at least formal morning class that will be given here. You're moving to another temporary temple. <laughs> bigger, is it? A little bigger. And then it's... So, yeah, they've already been working very hard and some have traveled overnight, which I requested you not to do, so you wouldn't be falling asleep in the class. <laughs> you could have a, come the day before and get a good day's rest. But I guess, whatever. You're all busy and this and that. But it may be also that... I, I'm also not speaking in a... In a very in a manner which is very enlivening, that may be there, whatever. But it may be also that you really don't clue into what's going on, because you really have to study Chaitanya Charitamrita to get a feel of what's going on between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. Chaitanya Charitamrita nitta karopan jaha hoite premananda. Bhakti Tattva Gyan. We are enjoined in Chaitanya Charitamrita to daily read, to daily drink the nectar. Of Chaitanya Charitamrita. By which we will get knowledge and bliss. Bliss of devotion, of prem. We get knowledge of devotional service. Such an important book. But factually, unless we carefully go through Gita and Bhagavatam, it's it's hard to enter the subjects of Chaitanya Charitamrita. And when are we going to finish Gita and Bhagavatam? Who's finished reading the Bhagavatam? Anyone finished the whole Bhagavatam? Anyone? No one read the whole twelve cantos? Anyone read the whole twelve cantos? Few hands are going up. Not enough. <laughs> Maybe they're all asleep and they can't hear what's being said. So yeah, in one sense we read it, but did we finish it? We didn't finish it. There's no finishing, but we have to go on to Chaitanya Char And when we read Chaitanya Charitamrita, then we can go back to Bhagavatam and start to understand it. <laughs> So maybe you're not picking up on all these points. I don't know. So, going on. Principles are more important than the sannyasi's own personal preferences or conveniences. <coughs> so stern was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in upholding this principle that he was prepared to abandon his most dear associates with whom he tasted prem and who helped him to taste prem. <coughs> and here I give a, a reference back to the Adi Lila where it stated that his associates helped him to taste prem. 
It wasn't a one-man job. They were helping. Indeed, his only reason for living was to associate with these beloved devotees. His threat to leave for Alalanath meant that he was practically ready to die than to tolerate Haridas's impropriety. Because if he'd have left and gone to Alalanath, how could he live without his disciples, without his followers, who are dearer to him than his own life? And he couldn't live. But still he was ready to go because it's better to die than to let looseness into the Sampradaya. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches by this pastor. But later looseness did come in so many ways. Aul, Baal, Karta, Bhaja, Na, what is that? Neri, da, uh, Daravesh, Smarta, Karta, Bhaja, Sahajya, Sai, these all different upper sampradayas came. Some of them were very loose. This uh, Goranga Nagari, Churadhari, Churadhari, then uh, Shaki Beki, it's particularly the Sahajya group. They're very loose. They'll, there, there's, what is that? There's one upper sampradaya, what's that? Kishori, something. That they enjoy young girls as their bhakti. Horrible. Kalachandi sampradaya. That was quite widely spread was it, when I was in Bangladesh. But most people didn't like them. They thought they were very bad people. They offer fish to Krishna with tulsi and they have illicit sexual behavior. The Sahaj There's a whole group of sahajiyas, even now in Navadweep, Navadweep town, but other people don't like them because they engage in, a, they, their illicit sex is their bhajan, they say. People don't like them. They think they're very bad, very dirty people. They are. But this is going on in the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'll just read one, actually one paragraph more. And I'm not, even if I go tomorrow, I won't finish it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's insistence that he, I won't finish the chapter. I have. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's insistence that he must leave brings into focus the dialectic between the independence and dependence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By definition, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Controller and thus independent of control by anything or anyone. And then I've given a reference to Shvetashvatara Upanishad in this regard. There is no force powerful enough to control him, for he is the Supreme Controller of all energies. And then I've quoted, given reference to Shvetashvatara Upanishad in relation to this also. Furthermore, he is not dependent on any social conventions, not even on Vedic rules, as has been stated prior to this. And I give the reference to that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So if you're reading this commentary, you can flip, you can see where in Chaitanya Charitamrita these things are stated. In fact, he, the Supreme Lord, may independently flout all such conventions and rules just to demonstrate his dependence on his devotees. And again, I give a reference to Chaitanya Charitamrita in this regard. And thus, devotees on the path of love, Raga Marga, insist that he is not independent at all, that he is dependent on the care of loving devotees headed by Yashoda and becomes subordinate to his friends and lovers. And I give a reference to that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Indeed, he himself declares his non-independence in relation to his devotees. I give a reference to Bhagavatam in this regard. Yet even in his dependence, he sometimes asserts his independence. In this case, to uphold a principle, the undoing of which would have spelt the undoing of his whole preaching mission. This also highlights the delicate dialectic between his enjoyment of pastimes which center on loving interactions with his devotees and the need to establish religious principles and thus fulfill the purpose of his avatar. So he comes to establish religious principles 
but he also comes for his own purposes to enjoy pastimes. So we see that's there. Krishna in Vrindavan is enjoying with the gopis. He's not establishing religious principles for humankind in doing so. In fact, if misunderstood, that will be taken as the opposite of establishing religious principle. He does establish a religious principle concerning himself that he is the supreme enjoyer, who is not subject to the rules of any of human society, and that he's not to be criticized. He does establish that. But for humankind, what we should follow, that he establishes when he goes outside Vrindavan. And you may say he married so many wives. So that's also a religious principle. You can marry so many wives if you can maintain them all and deal with them equally. That's also a religion. So outside Vrindavan, Krishna establishes religious principles for mankind. And inside Vrindavan, which is in the forest, it's away from the city, away from all the sophisticated people. There are Brahmins there also, but they're not outgoing preachers. So in within Vrindavan, he has his own independent way of doing things, of being completely dependent on his devotees. There. But sometimes for establishing, we see here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to establish religious principles. He, he could do whatever he liked. He could say, okay, Chota Haridas. He could have just ignored it in the first place. But because he, even when he's in Puri, relishing the feelings of Radharani, still he's always conscious that he has to establish religious principles. And his devotees have to do so also. As stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Dharma Shtapan Hetur Shadur Bebaha. Religious principles are established by the behavior of devotees. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even in the midst of his enjoying pastimes with his devotees, relishing the feelings of Radharani, he doesn't become lax in establishing the principles which are required for all of humankind and particularly for devotees. And this is such an important principle. We've seen just bringing it to our own practical experience. Within ISKCON there's been so much disturbance and it may take generations to put it to rectify the situation. So much disturbance because of illicit sex, especially by sannyasis. And I say it may take generations to rectify the situation if, if the sannyasis stop falling down, which doesn't happen much, although it's become accepted within ISKCON that certain sannyasis live with women which means it's, it's institutionalized adharma. So that's not the kind of thing you expect to hear on Gaur Purnima. But it's all part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. And if we're going to establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching in the world, Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale, if we're going to do that, it's not only by Harinam. We may say, yes, it is only by Harinam. But the devotees have to behave themselves. Otherwise, who will take this seriously? And even if people chant Harinam, if they engage in illicit activities, then the, that's not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and we're not going to get the result of it. So this, this section is... It, it may not be the most blissful thing to read on Gaur Purnima. We just want to be blissful, but... I'm reading this. It's very highly instructive and very important. So I'll leave it there for now. And, uh, oh, there is a few more minutes. I can go on for a few more minutes. Okay, text 133. After saying this, the, after telling Paramananda Puri that he's going to go, after saying this, the Lord for called for Govinda. Govinda, Agye. 
Of, after offering obeisances to Paramananda Puri, he got up and began to leave. My comment on this verse. Having asked for permission as a matter of etiquette, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not wait for a reply. He wasn't into bargaining with Paramananda Puri. He was so serious about this that without prior intimation, he was immediately ready to leave. He was, he was going to walk out. The, Govinda, come on, let's go. We're going. It wasn't that, okay, pack up this, pack up that. No, we're going right now. Text 134. In great haste, Paramananda Puri Goshai went before him and with great humility persuaded him to sit down in his room. My comment on this. With Prabhu, that means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, generally in Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes sannyas, he's referred to as Prabhu. Generally, sometimes Mahaprabhu, sometimes Chaitanya. With Prabhu already on his way out, Paramananda Puri found no other means than to stand in his path to physically prevent him from leaving. No one else would have dared to thus block Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Paramananda Puri himself would normally have never even dreamt of doing so. But this was an emergency. Paramananda Puri did not doubt the seriousness of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's intent. And he had no time to think about what was proper or improper. Somehow, immediately, he had to stop Prabhu from leaving. Text 135. Paramananda Puri said, My dear Lord Chaitanya, you are the independent personality of Godhead. You can do whatever you like. Who can say anything above you? All your activities are meant for the benefit of the people in general. We cannot understand them, for your intentions are deep and grave. My comment on this. Deep and grave. Gambia uh, Hridoitoma. Your, your heart is very deep. So my comment on this. No one, even including Sarup Damada, could understand why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is being so harsh. Because Ch Sarup Damada understands everything about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But at least at this point, he's not showing that he understands. Yet no one blamed him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for they accepted that he had some higher purpose beyond their present understanding. This attitude has been ta maintained by all true devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu up to the present generation. In other words, no one blames Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not among his devotees. It fell to Srila Bhaktisthan Sasra Thakur to reveal the intentions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Gambia Hridai, his deep and grave heart, as given in seven points of the purport at the end of this chapter. No one prior to this, as far as I know, had given had tried to explain exactly why. Why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu banish his dear devotee, who eventually ended up committing suicide? Why did he do it? Bhaktisthan Sarasvati explained in seven points. But otherwise, even without understanding this, the devotees accepted that we don't understand, but he must have some higher purpose. Then the next verse. 137. After saying this, Paramananda Puri Goshai left for his, for his own home. Then all the devotees went to see Junior Haridas. You, you couldn't understand. Paramananda Puri came out and the devotees were waiting. What happened? They could see from his face. Paramananda Puri. If Paramananda Puri's mission had been successful, he would have been very happy. But he... he he definitely came out with a grave look on his face. So they understood. Maybe they didn't even ask what happened. They could understand. And he'll explain. There's no... Prabhu is t completely intransigent. So my comment on this verse. There was nothing that anyone or all of them combined could do to help Haridas. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind was fixed 
and he was not willing to budge even slightly, even at the pleas of those who were dearer than life to him. Okay, then from verse 138, the story takes a little different turn. It gets worse. So we'll leave it there for now because the, the devotees are going up to the uh, sank, what's it called? Sankita Mandapam. So please go. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And all glories to Chota Haridas. He's not rejected. Ultimately. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, who gave us all this nectar. Vancha kalpa tarupyas chakri pao sindhu vayavacha patita anam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha dante nidhaya chunakang padaya nipatya kritva chaka kushata metad aham bravimi he sadava sakala eva vihaya durat goranga chandra charale kurutanu raga ha Parivadatu jano yatatata va nanu mukaro navayang vichara maha hari rasa madira madati mata bhuvi vilutama nartama nirvishama hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare